Oh, ho, another day, another fishing mission. Welcome back to the main cabin, Camp Claw, whatever we're gonna call it. I still haven't figured out a name for this place, but I think Camp Claw is pretty good. We'll just unofficially call this this cabin, this camp, Camp Claw, just because it sounds so good. And well, you know, we're drinking a lot of claws here. Anyway, today's a brand new day, and I'm pretty stoked because I got these fellas with me. I got the Noodle, which is right there. Hello, Noodle. How you doing? AP Bassin, who's wearing a uh, winter cap. How are you not sweating your ass off right now? It's for the aesthetic. It's for the aesthetic. I love it. The, the underscore Cole underscore Burford. So anyway, quick little story Well, before we get to this video kicked off. Some guy in the Cape while we were fishing for stripers absolutely obliterated my trailer, took off the light, took off the bunk. Oh, okay, yeah. Check Berg's video if you want to see the mayhem of my trailer getting destroyed. But that's besides the point. We're going to a lake I've never fished before, chasing after a fish that I don't really fish for that much. He has never caught one before, so I'm hoping that we find one and, and pop it in the face and just have a day of it. So anyway, stick with it, stay tuned. Let's go crank. We're on a mission to catch a big, toothy, elusive fish that is actually invasive here. I think you're supposed to kill these things when you catch them, but we're gonna put them back because that's just how we roll. We also may even try to dabble with some bass as well. It's, again, lake I've never been to before. It's Lake Sabic. See what happens. <laughs> Fingers crossed. We need to get this guy on a big old gator, hopefully, before he leaves. I think he leaves like Monday or Tuesday, so we only have a small window here, but we will make it happen. Let's go get him. Let's go find him. All right, cool. You ready to go? We're throwing big baits today. Thanks, guys. A little top water. Throw it out there. Okay. Yep, just like this. Then what? Real. Real. And then fish eats it right now. Right now, he's on. He's on. He's on. Waking. Waking. Oh my gosh, you missed him. Wow, why were we not throwing these for stripers? There you go. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. All right, here we are. First spot. This was recommended to me by buddy named Jason by Fishburne. Yeah, let's get it. First cast. Okay, that was not a very good first cast. What the f was that? Maybe I hit a log or I got that. There we go. Fish on? Yep, fish on. That's a pike. That's a pike. There we go, boys. Yes! That would be a pike. Pickerel. Not a pike, but a pickerel. Well, that's a big pickerel. That is a big pickerel. It's not the target species, but it's a. It's, I mean, the right family. Sauce, the Sausage, I think that is. Sweet! These guys are pretty abundant up here in the Northeast. They don't get as big as the pike, and they are native, so they're, um, yeah, they're interesting fish, that's for sure. There we have it. Oh, God, just they snap out. They love to snap out. Well, that's a start. There we go. First toothy critter of the day. Like I said, not the one we're after, but that's a pretty good pickerel. My gosh, decent fish. All right, send you back, buddy. Take care. Slimy little dudes. They smell so bad, too. My God. Fish on, fish on. I don't know. I hope it's a pike though. It might be a freaking smallmouth. It's not huge. What the hell do I have? Oh! Pickerel. Damn it. Another, like, good. Or is that a pike? That's, pickerel. That's a pickerel. Another decent sized pickerel. Wow. There we have it. Alright, see you later, pickerel. Well, this wasn't successful. We did catch two pickerel, which are in the same family, but they just don't get as big and ferocious. We're gonna head out of uh, Sebek right now. Sebek, it's like known for pike fishing, but not known for three Texas idiots to catch pike. So that's our call. That's our cue to get on out here. We're gonna go fish a lake that I know for sure has a lot of grass and a little bit more potential for us to hook up, especially if we wanna get one on the fly. Um, this just ain't happening. So we're gonna pack up the boat, 
take like probably a 35, 40 minute drive down to a different southern lake just north of Bangor and see if maybe they're happening there because it just ain't going in this, in this spot right now. So get the boat on the trailer, meet you on the road, and hopefully we'll find some bike. All right, we found some grass. This is the first spot in the second lake. Let's see if we can get a pike. At the very least, we might have a shot of a good largemouth doing this, this pikey action stuff. Throwing a big glide bay right now. Looking for a pike. Big old gator mouth. It's gonna happen here. It's gonna happen here. They can just do it all. Where does that blow up over here? Oh, no way. You have him. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, it's a good bass. Jesus. He's got a good largemouth. Oh my God. Dude, that's a good largemouth. What the f? What the f? What is going on here? Things just happened all of a sudden. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a nice one. Wow, that's a good large one. Oh my god. Oh my god. Just hammered. Is that a pike? What is that? Just another large mouth. Wow, okay. And oh my god, he had a follower. That was sick. That was really sick. Another large mouth on a giant glide bait. What's going on, Maine? I thought we had an understanding here. I thought we were going to catch some of these pike, but it's just large mouth like big glide baits here. I don't really know what's going on. It's not, I don't mind. I don't mind. It's bites in the boat. It's bites in the boat. It's bites in the boat is always good. Oh. What is that? It's another large mouth. <laughs> this is crazy. It just goes to show how healthy the population of large mouth is in here. If they're freaking eating this good on a big bait. Can't imagine what happened if I just throw like an actual bass lure. What happened then? You have no rod. I'm throwing a musky lure. He's back there throwing a fly. It's just like, y'all are okay in the head? Like, what is wrong with us? There we go. See you. Now, see you later. Last spot of the day. This is our final chance at getting that big old pike, big old gator mouth. Ooh, there's some grass down there. I like this. I just want to see if one, like one just fall it all the way up the boat and just T-bone it. I've done that before and it's just flown out my hand. Just straight in the water. That's the weird thing about these legs up here is you don't see like standing timber. And there's like very few creek arms because they're all natural. El natural. You know what fi you know what fish love? Uh, whopper poppers? Not pike. Thanks, coach. Me Well, this might be our first strike of the trip. Holy moly, we got a little wet out there, guys. It was a bit windy. Well, we didn't have a bad day, but we definitely didn't have a good day. Uh, we failed our mission to catch a pike, which is okay. They're, I guess, apparently up here, tough fish to catch, even though they are invasive and supposed to be in this lake. We just couldn't locate them. We did manage to catch some largemouth on a giant glide bait, which is pretty crazy, and then a few pickerel, which is kind of like the dumber, less exciting version of pike, but in my opinion, still pretty cool. I'm sorry we could not make it happen. My main objective was to get this man right here on his first ever pike. Yeah. You look so disgusted. Well, I'm disgusted because Parrot got us soaking wet on the way back. Yeah. Second well, off, you, my know what's, you know what's brutal? Is I got, I got ridiculed for not knowing how to drive my own boat. Yeah. Clearly, clearly. Like soaked. Like he even got wet on the other side. Like so you, don't, you guys don't think I know how to drive my boat. How about now? Yeah, no. You, you, let, let me see, let me see your hair. hair. Just like. Buddy, so, just just so. Perrick made a good point. We're just gonna blame it on the wind. That's one of the reasons why we didn't catch fish today. It's never the angler's fault, right? I mean, clearly we're amazing anglers. We're using Guggen baits. And we're using Guggen baits, and it's just like, I mean, it's not our fault. We're gonna try to maybe do another smallmouth sound. I think we're probably gonna scrap pike to a later date. You're gonna come back up here in oh, July. Yeah. So the, the main the main goal for July is big stripers, but we might even squeeze a little pike mission. I gotta learn, I gotta learn how to catch these pike before we just do one of these missions. We, we just pick the lake 
and said, hey, let's try it. Didn't work, happens. You know, it happens, Lucky. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we caught their, their ugly cousin now. That's so. what I said. I was like, we caught the less exciting, more dumb. You know, like a pike is like a 10. Pickerel? Like a three. Like a three. Like a, a, a cool three. A cool, th a cool, a, three. A cool main three. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Lucky and the group are going to head back to the cabin. Uh, there's one thing I actually want to talk about and show you guys, so just keep watching, stick with it. It's actually pretty cool. This is a suggestion a lot of you guys gave me in the comments when I first bought the cabin, so I'm really excited to show you. But anyway, heading off the water. Wasn't a huge success, but we did catch fish. My hands smell like slime, so that's huge. Whew, made it back to camp safe and sound. Lucky, how you doing? Did you have fun today? I'm sorry we didn't get any pike. I'm so sorry. We failed you, little girl. We failed you. <laughs> You're having a good old time. Admittably, we are picking today's video off the next day. So this is day number two. Uh, like I said before it ended, I wanted to share something pretty important with you guys. So let's go on the camp and check it out. You got this. Use those little legs. Pike mission didn't work so well, as you guys know. But what we have here is a package. Now, this is something that I've, I've been suggested a lot. I've been asking you guys what I should do to the camp, what I should do to this little cabin. How should I customize it to make it, you know, like a fisherman's outpost? I've already started, as you may or may not have noticed up here. I just actually installed this little thing today. I have one of these in my garage in Texas. It's just a cork board, what you'd normally use to hang like uh, paper or notes on. Uh, but I found this heavy duty cork board works really well for hanging lures on. So that's what I've used it for. And then up there, I've got um, some wire that I'm hanging some of the, like the bigger baits on, like some big striper baits. That way it's not gonna rip through the cork. I'm putting like the smaller stuff, like little scouts and spooks and you know swim baits on the cork, whereas this is actually being hung up. So that's something new I did, not super exciting, kind of cool, but I figured I'd share it with you guys. Also still in the process of trying to find someone to do a replica for my brook trotter. Really, really want a replica in here, some sort of fish mod. I've never gotten one ever in my entire life. So I think this would be a cool place to do it. And I'd like to start off with that big brookie we caught in the winter time. But anyway, you know, in the comments, I was reading a lot of your suggestions as to what I should do with the cabin. Some pretty outlandish, some stuff we're gonna make happen. But this is the first one, the first edition that I thought would work really well. These things are sick. I've never used these before, so we'll see how it works. They're meant for your garage, but we're gonna use them inside the house today. Normally, I'd leave rods out in the garage, but here in the camp, we don't have a garage. We have a little shed, which isn't big enough for the big rods. I've got like 10, 11 foot striped bass rods. So those probably won't fit anything other than in here. And we are gonna work on building the garage slash barn eventually, but baby steps, one thing at a time. There's probably instructions, but I'm not gonna read those. I think it'll look so sick. And they'd be like readily available too. If we need to grab some rods, if we're doing a surf mission, if we're doing a bass mission, if we're doing a pike mission, hopefully again, because since we didn't catch one. So I knew this is why this is why you read directions and this is why you you take it easy. So we have an 11 foot rod here. Okay, that it fits, right? It makes sense. Looks good. But the only issue is you can't you can't really take it out of the rod holder. It's stuck there. And if you want to go forward with it, watch this is hilarious. Oh, hang on. Yep, it's almost out. Yep, yep, almost out. Oh wait, no. For the big moment, can we take it out? Let's see. Oh, oh, check it out. Another. That one fits. Check it out. We now have a new home for all the big rods. We've got a just kind of give you the lowdown. We've got a 10 6, an 8 foot. Man, I should know the lengths of my own rod, shouldn't I? That's a 9. Sorry, stand correct. Got an 8 foot, a 9 foot, 9 6, big surf cast. Got an 8 foot, which is like my boat striper rod. And then we've got a PE 6, like big saltwater fish lure type rod right there. Here in the States, it doesn't really get a whole lot of use for me personally. It's a great Maybe rod. Not yet. Maybe not yet. It's true. A little foreshadowing. I'm just thinking, like, it was not, it's not a good enough rod for tuna. Like, what, what could you catch? You could probably catch a 150 on that one. Yeah, maybe a 100. I don't know about anything above that, though. Maybe 150. The thing is, it's too overkill for striper, but it's a little bit underkill, or it's underwhelmed or undergunned for, you know, uh, bluefin tuna. But anyway, yeah, it looks freaking sick. I only have six rods, so it fits out perfectly. I'm going to install the um, the other ones, too, like the more conventional like uh, bass and, and, and freshwater setups here in a little bit. But kind of have to duck a little bit when you're going under, but I've kind of put it on the far side of 
the uh, the living room, so that way it's out of sight and out of mind. The only person who has to duck is Alex whenever he's go <laughs> when he's good. going to edit. I'm good. I'm oh yeah, good. I'm, I'm straight. <laughs> yeah, just watch that. Um, watch, watch that, that hook? spook. Yeah. Yeah. No, I th I think I'm short enough for it. <laughs> that would hurt so bad. Imagine you're just like super tired, wake up early in the morning, just go boom Dunk. right on that. So dope though. All right, we'll, we'll install the other ones and then uh, get to it. Well, there you have it, guys. Take a look above. Just a masterpiece. What is this like? It's uh, what's that painting on the ceiling in the cathedral? What is that called? Is that Michelangelo? Only thing beautiful than the Michelangelo Sistine Chapel painting is is just all these amazing twigs. We got big rods, we got little rods. I didn't want to bore the hell out of you guys with the second installation, but now we've got a place for the small casting rods and the freshwater rods as well. It just looks beautiful. This is so practical. It's a good place to keep our rods for the ones that we're not using when we're on our fishing missions. But that's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, we are not gonna quit pike fishing. This is just our first attempt of many up here in Maine. But right now, this is your moment. This is your time. Drop me a comment in the section below. Let us know what you'd like to see at the cabin next. What should we install? Whether it be fishing related or non-fishing related, one thing I do wanna let you guys know is we are working on building a barn because I've got a lot of toys. I've got two snowmobiles, a Can-Am, full-size forerunner, boat, and then another boat. We'll keep that a secret, but my point is we got a lot of stuff that needs to be uh, it needs to be put somewhere. I got nowhere to put it right now here at the cabin, so that's coming on the way, but if you guys have any other suggestions aside from that, let me know, drop me a comment, and we will make it happen. I appreciate the view. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, folks, keep pike fishing. Never stop.